Testing out some cheap tools and halfway through I'll give you my guide to buying them. First random tool Vivor or Vivor sent me would be a bending kit or a bender, tubing bender. I've actually been looking into some tubing benders, I don't know, maybe they're listening as closely as Google. Either way, I've gone over to Tim's a Garage, Tim from Tim Welds. He's got some sweet stuff over there and he's actually doing an old school go-kart frame with some bent uh, round tubing and so it's intrigued me. I've been wanting to look into one. Now just right off hand, I don't think this would probably uh, do and that's just because it looks like the die for biggest one is 7 8 Yep. If I were to be doing a go-kart frame, it'd probably most likely be out of one inch minimum, if not bigger. Not to say this isn't useful, I do have to do some copper tubing. Also good for other smaller items like your shiny silver copper and copper looking aluminum, which everyone just has lying around in your garage. May not be able to do M type copper tubing. Um, this is some half inch M type and the first one just totally uh, broke right through. I spaced out the spreader bar on the second one and it still did kink it, but didn't break through. So copper tubing may need a little more practice. It also does 3 8 inch rebar. I was not thinking it could do it. It doesn't say it could do rebar, but hey, that's a nice 90 degree. And just so you know, it also comes with a pipe cutter, a reamer, and a scoring or deburring tool. So, you know what? Hey, it works for the right application. Second on the list of random tools that they sent me is a big heavy box. As I'm diving into this, I'll let you know I did not pay for these, nor did I choose them. I simply told Vevor that they could send me a mystery box of tools, and so they did. I reiterate that I didn't choose these because I don't think this would be an item that I'd get. And it's a tool organizer. Hey, you know, I figured they probably would have sent me just tools to review, but hey, maybe they're really observant and they noticed that I put my drills just up on the hooks on the pegboard. So, hey, thanks, Vivor. Now, before we dive into the last two, which I already know what they are because... It says it right on the box. Let me tell you my guide for buying cheap tools. Vivo's motto is tools at half price. So when they start toting the cheapness of the tools, you know you're gonna be getting Harbor Freight quality. Not that that's a bad thing, as long as you know what to get going into it. Number one, the one-time project. These are those things, you know, whether it's a broken appliance or car thing, whatever it may be, it's just one project that you need that tool for. Now just make sure that the tool is correct for that application and that you're not overexerting or overdoing it with the tool because of course you're gonna break it. Number two is the first tool you own. So I say this in a way that if you've got a new hobby or trade you wanna get into and you don't wanna break the bank but you wanna test out the waters, cheap tools are the perfect for that. And hey, if usually you can use the tool or learn on that tool, let's just say a stick welder, then by all means when you make that jump or upgrade afterwards, it's all the easier. Number three, if it's a very simple tool with very few moving parts. If you pay top dollar for sockets, you're doing it wrong. I'm sure I'll get a whole bunch of snap-on lovers commenting down below. Honestly, who cares if that socket or that wrench is a few thousands off? It doesn't matter. But if it's a very complex product or part and you start stacking all those tolerances together, well, then you're gonna have an issue. So I say, keep it basic, you're gonna be fine. Sockets, hammers, screwdrivers, that sort of thing, you're golden. Leave the precision lathe to a reputable tool maker. Number four is if it's cheap enough. Hey, combine that with number one, which is your first time tool and go for it. Just as an example, I know this is a Vivor video, but hey, I bought this angle grinder from Harbor Freight for 10 bucks like 15, 20 years ago, and it still runs and works. If it broke, I wouldn't have cared because it was 10 bucks. Now onto the not so mysterious welding helmet and welder. Now, I do have to say that I've actually already had this exact helmet. Um, I did a giveaway for it like six months ago. Either way, kind of already tested this thing out. It's a welding helmet, it works great. Side note, a really cool feature, not feature, but a really cool thing that they've added. 
They uh, put a full-on GoPro uh, setup kit with all of the different adapters and stuff. So, you know what? If you want to, you know, start filming your welding. Auto darkening, you can fix your shade. So, with that and the GoPro mount, it's a great deal. Now the little toaster, or sorry, welder that could, yes, this thing is teeny. It does claim it can do 140 amps. I only tested it at about 95, um, some 3 16 diameter rods. That's all I had lying around. So it worked great for that. I definitely say it was putting out that amperage. I didn't actually put an amp meter on and test it, but it worked. I was able to throw down some beads, no issues. Now the bonus for what I would say this welder has are both of these leads are 10 feet. Uh, typically all of the really cheap welders I've tested out, they've only give you like a five foot lead. Going back to my guidelines, I would say the welder would totally fit in the number two and number four categories on if it's, you know, your first time welder. Hey, go for it. If you can weld with this, all the better for if you upgrade. And number four, it's cheap. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 70 bucks. It is one of the cheapest welders you can get on Amazon that actually welds. So just to recap, pick up the tubing bender if you've got the right application. I'd probably skip on the tool organizer. The welding helmet works just fine. And hey, if you're in the market for a cheap welder, pick it up. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.